In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to do one construction and from it take two tracings, a hexagonal tracing and a square tracing that will allow you to draw a fuller tiling of a stellated 12-fold Islamic geometric rosette. So the features of a stellated rosette is that it has the same as a normal 12-fold rosette which has a star, a kite, and then the petals but it has one other shape which is part of the construction so that when it's tiled these spaces outside the rosette become a little bit more interesting and that's in a way shows you the journey of these patterns and how they can become far more sophisticated by having smaller rosettes and more space to kind of resolve and beautify outside of them then it gets a little bit more complicated now, in terms of radiuses, the radius that you might have used for the, the prior video was 10 centimetres, thereabouts. So perhaps for this you might be ready for 8 centimetres, or 7, or 6. Um, I'll show you what a radius will give you in terms of some final design ideas. If you look at the tiles, the widest part of this goes across corner to corner. And if I look at that one here, the pink lines, that is the same as the initial radius okay now when you draw a hexagonal tile you'll find it takes up a little bit more space so this one for example has a smaller radius than that tracing it's 6.5 centimeters and the final piece is 29.5 centimeters now given that a3 paper is just nearly under 30 centimeters this wouldn't have fitted on there so therefore I went to a larger piece of paper it's a 40 centimeters square so the hexagonal tile if you want to tile it and repeat it and do so you might need more space so you might want to reduce your tile if you want to do the square tiling because the actual square ends up being smaller than the circle you can go a little bit further so for this one you have the initial radius from this drawing was eight centimeters and then the final piece is actually 28 centimeters and that just about fits on a3 paper so this is a square tiling but done on a diagonal so the tracing paper was laid down not like this but like this and then only a quarter in each corner and therefore it's a smaller uh, drawing painting and it's about 23.5 centimeters at its widest part having a look at the features I noticed that outside the rosette you've also got some petals some hexagons some of these other shapes octagons so there's a lot more going on and that makes it a little bit more interesting if I show you for the other ones all of a sudden this is a massive area of space in the middle and um, that becomes more interesting and the way the rosettes touch each other is rather than it's petal to petal it's a stellated dart to stellated dart the same applies for the hexagonal you've got these uh, darts touching each other and then you've got these beautiful petals hexagons in between there's more space in between the square tiling okay so I've given you some radiuses ranging from 6.5 to 8 um, I have this idea that perhaps for the first one draw it as large as you're happy to go and then if you want to then reduce it okay now all of these radiuses aside I'm gonna go large so that you can see what I'm up to let's begin So we'll draw our line and mark its centre. Next our circle. And with the same radius, I'm going to draw semi-circles from the left and the right so 
we next need to construct our vertical I'm going to leave this compass aside so to construct the vertical look at this distance visualize half of it and make sure your compass is open to more than that distance between my two fingers on the left and on the right now they should cross they didn't it was just too small okay so there's the cross and let's repeat at the top so I'm making sure I use the correct intersection which is this one you can draw your vertical and going back to this one we're going to use the north and south intersection on the circle just a quick check to make sure it hasn't moved and we'll draw our semicircle from the top and from the bottom always centered on the circle while you still have your compass in your hand you can do the quarter circles from each corner a little hover to check that everything is okay Next, we're going to divide our circle or space into uh, eight. Now, because I've gone for a bigger radius, my ruler, I have to uh, move along. Okay, now we're going to take four lines from this section and through to the center and then out to these four and it'll be the corners of this inflated square going to the corners of this inflated square so four from here through this point out to here and then the same in this direction this time visualize the square and just make sure they go far enough We're now able to draw in the hexagonal tile. So this has two of its corners at north and south. Uh, the next other corners at every fourth point. So I'm going to draw this with a dotted line. Next, we're going to extend the sides to the corners to get our square tile. So lining it up, extend upwards until it's the diagonal. And do that on both sides. And when you line up these two points that you just made, it should line up with one, two, three, four further points. So good to verify that it goes through all of the points. So next we're going to redefine our circle. So this initial circle was to set this up. And now we're going to make a smaller circle that just touches the sides of the square on the left and on the right. Um, oh, and the top and the bottom, of course, and it just touches the sides of the hexagon. So this one is worth doing carefully because you've got many places to verify it. And I'm finding I've got a dodgy drawing, so I'm going to verify it very carefully. Just a little point on accuracy. So it's touching. Of the places it can touch, it'll be four for the square and um, four additional ones for the uh, hexagon. So that's eight points. And it's touching one, two, three, four, 
five, not quite, six, and not quite. So it's touching in six of the eight places. That then tells me this line I drew was probably a bit off. And then this line I drew was probably a bit off. And when you look closer at the line, maybe it's just hitting underneath the point, maybe by half a millimetre. And here you can definitely see it's gone a bit skew. So sometimes when something's inaccurate, it's not the thing you're drawing that's accurate, the circle, it's the situation, like a local inaccuracy going on. With this hexagon, if you put your ruler against the parallel or the previous hexagon, you can see it should be parallel to it. And then you can also see that I start at this point, so I call that zero, one, two, three, four. It's every four points. So there's two ways to kind of check that you're okay before you draw and extend them into the hexagons corner. Okay, so the second hexagon, we'll start here. So if we call that one o'clock, it'll go from one to three to five to seven to nine. So the odd hours of a clock. And it's on this circle again. So these were the stellated darts tips what we need to do is to establish another circle that will be the edge of the rosette so this time I'm going to reduce it so that it just touches the points where the two hexagons overlap and again I'm going to check it and hover in quite a few places so it seems to be fine for at least these six and now I'm going to commit and draw the circle in and again, if it's not hitting, so it's not hitting in those two places, then maybe that line, yep, I can see that line is the issue rather than the circle. Okay, we're going to put in our proportioning line. So I'm going to start it on the circle at 12 o'clock. Come down to 90 degrees and go forward one intersection and this time I'm just going to mark the two intersections I need so line up your ruler against those two points and one mark there and one mark there so it's one radial in or one diagonal in from that point and the same from there I don't know sometimes I call these lines radials diagonals um, divisions so much terminology. Okay, now we're going to draw this circle. I think I'm going to do it in red. And the points we need are the hour points. So 12, 1, 2 and so on. And we're ready to draw in the lines of the sides of the petal. So these are pairs of parallel lines. So take any point. I'm going to start at the top. So that's uh, 12 o'clock. And you're going to line up from the one that is five away. So one, two, three, four, five. And the same rule applies for this one. To, um, so line up the two points. And on the outer edge, you start at the hexagon. And then inside you come in two division lines past the circled point. So start the hexagon, there's the circled point, and then two divisions in. And then it ends on the next circled line. So this is an optional proportioning circle. And now we're going to go around and draw the rest of the petals. So this was my first one. 
my next one I'm going to go in a clockwise direction connecting each point to the one that is five away and using the hexagons on the outer side of the line to be the stopping point and this circle to be the inner stopping point and if you don't have the circle you can just stop the second division line in from the point So there we have all the lines we need for the hexagonal tile. So we'll take that tracing and then add more lines, construction lines, to fill these corners and get those complete as well. So I've got a humongous bit of tracing paper for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to turn it sideways. I like my tracing paper to be wider than the drawing. I don't like it to be perfectly square because then the masking tape interferes and I don't like it. So you know what's happened to my masking tape? I think the heat in this shed is making it weird. Or it is inherently weird. So firstly the tile of the hexagon and rather than do dotted line on the tracing paper I'm going to just mark the corners with crosses. So we have the six corners marked and now we're going to draw in the lines. So firstly, the hexagons we drew, the two overlapping ones, they need to be drawn. with a gap and either it's a there's always a gap but sometimes there's an extension too so it goes all the way to the edge of the hexagonal tile so if I complete the top half hopefully you can see where the gaps and where the extensions lie So remember, you'd be doing this in a 2B pencil, not a thick calligraphy pen. Okay, so all of the hexagons are drawn. Now we're going to go on top of the rosettes, petals, sides, the parallel lines, um, to complete the pattern. So there we have the complete hexagonal tile and you would have drawn this on tracing paper but with a 2B pencil so that you can transfer it. We'll do the other one next. Now for this you might want a smaller compass and it's a very small radius. It should touch the corners of those two extension lines and what you're visualizing is a third of a hexagon what is this what this is going to reveal is if there's the consistencies oh that's good so i do a lot of checking before committing to drawing and i know this corner is especially dodgy Okay, so we have the circles in the eight places we need them. Okay, we actually have all that we need for the next tracing. Now, when I construct this, I'm going to construct in a slightly 
weird order but bear with me because I want to show you how we can draw existing lines in most of the places but some of them are going to extend them so um, we're going to take that into account so the first thing I'm going to do is the corners of the square and the next thing I'm going to do are the petals first So I'm going to draw two sides at the top and two sides at the bottom. So this time you don't go into, you don't go to the edge of the hexagon. You go to the edge, oopsie, of the square. I did that too far. Oh, because I missed a pair. Oh. Okay, now we are cooking. Am I hungry? So those two there. And then the same for the two that are symmetrically or opposite it below. And then the other four, you'll put your ruler in position. So like this one, but you'll extend into that little circle's edge. And here you just stop. This one you'll do all the way to the circle's edge. So you're not going to the edge of the square tile every time. You're going to, um, in this case, the edge of the circle. This is the best line. It goes from the circle to the center to that little circle. Now with my thick lines, I can't see where it's exactly hitting the circle, but because you'll be doing it in pencil, as soon as it hits the circle, you stop. And now we're going to complete each corner. So use the next two slides to complete the corner octagons correctly. These octagons aren't regular. They're formed by extending the sides of the regular, regular hexagons that surround them. Use the hexagons outer corner and the corner on the side of the square tile to position your ruler along that red dotted line and then draw the octagon inside the square tile. Do this in all four corners and your tile is complete. So there we have it, the second tracing. So these two are the giant ones that I did as a demonstration for you, but let's get out the size that you'll be drawing so you're ready for the next stage. So you would have just drawn something like this and you should have a square and a hexagonal tile ready to transfer to a watercolor paper and then paint going to transfer the square tile at a 45 degrees angle so this is 300 gsm watercolor paper i'm using a soft 2b pencil to just mark a guideline and i want it to be in the center of my paper from every point and this line is very gentle and again, I'm going to mark it center vertically. And then this tile, I've um, put the lead face down and I'm going to do it in this orientation. So it's uh, this cross, these corners, in the centre, the corner, the corner, the corner, all lined up on the line underneath. And the centre, I, I usually do vi visually, so I kind of want to make sure it's in the middle. And so I'm just applying it to my hand. 
yeah. the edge of the spoon, clamp hand. Now, in each of these four places, I'm going to put or tile a quarter of the pattern. So I just remove these for the time being. What I want to be able to do is line up the crosses and the pattern. So if it's not lining up perfectly on one side, try it on the other side. So of course ideally it should line up on all four sides but that may not happen in practical terms and if you can't get it to match on any of the sides it's up to you whether you want to proceed and just kind of figure out the best fit and then readjust it afterwards or just start again it is up to you And then we'll do this side. Actually, I have made a decision. I am going to do a perfect square. It is done. Oh, and this fit quite well straight away. <gasps> Phew. I was getting worried there. I can see this situation where the tips touch each other. I'll need to make an adjustment with. But the rest of the patterns seem to be not so bad. I'm going to outline the rectangle, sorry, the square that I'll be using. I always find it easier to just turn the paper. And each corner will have a quarter of the um, central star. And along the sides you've got half an octagon each time. So do whatever touch ups you need. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the extra. I feel like saying not all 2Bs are equal. This is a quite hard 2B. 